2 Corinthians chapter 8. Moreover, brethren, continue from chapter 7, we do you to wit, to know, have knowledge of, we're going to speak about money now, wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. The same Macedonia, they were having troubles and problems, chapter 7. How that a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. So they're they're poor. They're deep poor. But what God has blessed them abounded. There are riches that they give of their own. They were able to come up with a collection. They were able to come up with money. Even being deep poverty. They gave for the Lord. One of the things signed for a Christian is that you love. And people don't like the message when it comes to money, but money is love giving. Money is needed to run things. Money is needed to pay the pastor, pay the lights, the, the heating, air conditioning, the taxes, whatever it needs to be. I mean, I don't think people th realize that, you know, they think that the pastor in the back office somewhere, God reaches down with his only arm and says, well, here, here's the money for this, this month's bills. Or they think that the utility company sends a bill to the pastor of the church. Well, oh, you guys are a church, so you know, you're know you exempt from it. No, that's not so. It takes money. Just as much as it takes anybody money to run things. And money is one of the worst things that, that they'll blame the ministry for. You can preach one message out of 52 weeks about giving. And all, that guy's all for preaching. I've heard it. I've heard it. For to their power. I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. So they gave of themselves by themselves. And beyond the power, they gave more. This is like that widow that was in the, in the treasury. She cast her two mites, and Jesus said, that is all she had. Now listen, I'm going to tell you the truth right now. I don't have that much faith. I'm sorry. I have not given the Lord my entire paycheck. You say, "What if the Lord laid it on your heart?" I don't think the Lord would do that. Laying it, we are under. We're not. We are under grace. It's not the Old Testament tithe. You have to do tithe. I think if you don't give it grudgingly, if you willingly give it to the Lord, our ages, you wanted it again. Now, I'll tell you this, basically, I do tithe. Just to be sure with God that even though tithing is really the Old Testament, I'll be sure with God that I'm giving at least a minimum. And I give more, and I'm not going to say anything else. But God's given you something. God has supplied your needs. Why can't you return it? For to their power, I bear record. Paul says, you know, this is recorded fact. This is a documented fact. Praying us with much entre entreaty that we would receive the gift, the offering. They're praying about their offering, giving it to Paul. And take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. We have taken this money. We want to give you this money prayerfully for the use of saints. There are saints that need help. There are saints in the ministry. There, he's going to get, he's going to tell Timothy under special causes. There are widows that need to be taken care of, which we saw in the book of Acts that they weren't being taken care of. The church is supposed to help those in the church that need help, not the government. But we've gone a long way from that. We've come a long way from God in the Bible living. Then again, I know I know the church that uh, one particular guy, I think they gave him three or four cars. He didn't take care of the cars, didn't break down, they gave him another car. And that's wrong too. You got to be careful with your money. You say, well, what if I do my money prayerfully? Somebody comes up to me and says, 
can I have a dollar for a sam or whatever they want? They come up to you, they want a food or a drink item. And you're looking at me, you know, and saying, no, I don't know if it's really going to be food or drink. It may be prostitution, it may be drugs, or it may be booze. I don't want to give them for that. And I'll tell you what the best thing you do is you look around you. If you got the standard, if you got the ways to help. Let's say that there, there's a restaurant or a convenience store. And you say to them, I'll tell you what, we'll go into that store. I'll get you the minimum. Let's say like it's a fast food restaurant. I'll get you the simplest hamburger, simple fries, and I'll get you a medium drink. I mean, I'm not going to get you the biggie, biggie meal. I'll get you the minimum meal that you can fill yourself. I go to the convenience store. Uh, they got sandwiches there. I'll let you have a sandwich, uh, a soda, and a bag of chips. Okay? Now, they're really sincere, and I've, I've done this. I've only had two, two or three people take me on this. Yeah, okay, yeah. I had one guy sitting in a fast food restaurant. Man, he was just overjoyed that we helped. And man, I, just, I was just handing him a fistful of gospel tracts. He was so happy. And then there's other cases where you got to be careful because the Bible says we don't know who angels are. We may entertain them unaware. And I had another guy one time, he wanted a place to stay. He wanted $20. And I told him, I said, I think I've done this twice to two people. Yeah, we did this at the gas station one time. And I really, you know, I can't test you on, on your story here, but I'm going to tell you right now. Put your hand on this bell. I think both of them were 20s or 5. I said, I'm giving you this name of Jesus Christ. I'm giving you this money on your merit. And if you use this thing other than what you say, it's upon your head. But I'm giving it to you by the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ. And then, you know, you... It's hard to tell people when, when you see people outside of Walmart and they tell you, oh, we make a great living here. And, and it's hard to, to, to believe some, a woman coming up to you and you don't know. Is her story real? Because we realize where we get gas, there's another team of people that will come through asking for money. And it's got so that you don't know. These These people in Macedonia, they collected money and look what they did. They prayed over it. They're handing money over to Paul, but guess what? Paul, listen, Paul's a man. I don't raise Paul above Jesus Christ. I don't raise his, his writings above all the writings in the Bible. I go through Genesis to Revelation. But they are praying how their money's being used. There's been a few churches. I put money in that plate. And I said, Lord, I'm giving this money to your honor of this ministry, but I'm not giving it to that. Do not put my money to that. Do not let me be charged to that. That event, that thing, whatever it is. Don't put my money there. I'd rather have my money go to the electric bill than something like that. And you can do that. You can pray. Say, listen, when you put that money in the box, if you don't like something the church is spending money about, say, Lord, I don't want to go there. And then you got money where, where if you put money in the box outside your tithes extra i want to go to this missionary five dollars five dollars this missionary ten dollars to this work you can write on the note of your check where you want that money by your prayer and the church has to by law put that money to where you say it goes if they don't they're in violation of the prayer and they're in violation of cashing that check or the envelope that you put it in so they pray about it Praying us with much in, entreaty that we would receive the gift. Oh, Paul, please take this. You know what Paul's going to think of their deep poverty? Keep it. You need it. And yet, did Jesus Christ go over, over that box and say, Ma'am, here's your two mites back? No. I am never going to say, give, give all your money. Never. Never. I'm not a radio TV evangelist, but Jesus praised the woman who had all she had. I'm never going to say that because I'm not going to say something that I don't preach. I have never given all my money. Now, I've given where I went down in my pocket, whatever wasn't in my pocket, I put it in the plate, but that's not my entire living. 
that he received the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. Now look at that fellowship there. You want to have fellowship? You like fellowship? You like the hamburgers, the pasta, pizza, and all the desserts at the, at the Baptist table? This fellowship right here is that you are ministering to the saints. You're helping them. That's a fellowship. There's Christians that saints that you don't even know in another town. My fellowship is through God to, hey, he may need bread. They may need a, a help with the bills. That church may need something. And that's called a fellowship. You're in, the, you, know, you know the best way to think about fellowship? See that word ship? You're a fellow. You're all in one boat. And, when, and the thing about something like this, think, think about in the back of the boat. I don't, I don't know how big the boat is, but think about it. It springs a leak. Well, what do you do? You call up to the people at the bow. Hey, back here in the stern, we got a hole. Can you pass that can back here so we can bail? And you're helping each other. And you're keeping that ship afloat. While you say to the midshipmen, hey, we need some kind of plug. We need something. While we're while we're taking a bucket of water out of this thing, can you develop some? And that's you working together to keep that boat afloat. Everybody's together. And it's not in the boat where, you know, well, who caused the leak? Who did this? It's not that. It's what can I do to help? Your arm's getting tired. Let me help. That's fellowship. And this they did. They prayed. They gave, not as we hope. That's an interesting state. Not as we, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. Oh! They gave their life, their family, their house, their all to God first. They gave their body over to the Lord to service. Then they gave their money. There are people today that will give money to church. And they, they've already expected to get that little receipt from the church so they can put it on the IRS. My church is going to give me a, a form of the IRS. I, I keep an envelope and I throw it in the box. Sometimes I open it. Sometimes I don't. I don't claim an IRS. I think if I claim an IRS, the IRS gets the credit, I get the credit, and God don't, so God won't give me the credit. Now, you feel how you want, I think you lose if you go to the IRS with your contributions. But they gave themselves. That's more important. And then they're giving their, they're giving their, their funds. They gave themselves unto the Lord and unto us by the will of God. So they, they're serving God, they're doing right, they're giving up their sins, they're Giving money and they're giving to Paul. Gave unto us, Paul. They may have sent Paul Patipus or paper or whatever you maybe sent them clothes, whatever. They are giving for the work of the ministry themselves, money and other things needed. Nursery in a church is giving yourself because you're giving time out of hearing the message. Knocking on doors, street ministry, going out, passing out, track. You are giving of yourself. You are taking time out as God took his son out to, to, to die for our sins. And you'll be rewarded. It's not just money. There's many things you can do for God. Time is another thing that you can give along with money. Time. Time. According to us, now watch this, by the will of God. God wanted Macedonia to give themselves. God wanted them to give of their money. And God wanted them to give to Paul and the minister. And they fulfilled it. What's the will of God for me? Giving. Oh, you got to mention money. I didn't say anything about money. Take on a nursery. Vacuum. Yeah, all, I mean, there's all kinds. You, you can make a list. And it didn't, doesn't... Well, I mean, if you buy stuff for a soup, but... There's many things you can do. Give a ride to church. That's the will of God. 
And there may be, what's the will of God? What's the will of God? And then when you tell them, uh, money. Yeah, but isn't one of the rewards gold and silver? And I guess you say precious stone is a money unit too. See, when you put your money in God's account, think about the interest he'll give you. Eternal interest. When you give something to the Lord, time or money or yourself, he records it down the book. You don't believe me, go back and read numbers. And those numbers that you give in the recording book, now I believe, and you can take this put in the garbage can, but uh, using myself as a, I believe in heaven there's a book called Stiley Hayward. And I don't know if it's chapter and verse numbers or day and time. But it's being recorded somewhere, somehow. And that will be put to the test. Whether it's evil or good, it's being recorded. And it will be put down by fire. Whatever burns up, there's nothing to it. It's gone, lost, sorrow. But whatever remains, gold, silver, precious stone. These Macedonians are going to get gold, silver, and precious stone. And they may not even heard the message of the judgment seat of Christ. We have. Insomuch that we desire Titus, there he is again, talked about him last night, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Titus went to the Corinthians. He's doing a work in the Corinthians. He, he's begun with them. Continue with them. So what Paul's now, remember we learned last night that Paul's bragging about the Corinth church, how great it was, how great Titus said, you guys are coming, you, you guys are so good. Now he's bragging about the Macedonian church to the Corinthians. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, this is the Corinthians, they got faith now. Utterance and knowledge, this is that babe carnal church. Knowledge now. And diligence, now, now they're looking at things more carefully. They're not a little baby walking around the house and putting everything in their mouth. I saw the other day in church, a little child gave a baby a, a quarter. Like, Mom, no, 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 don't do that. Because that quarter would go in the baby's mouth. Then they're point. Well, no, I don't put that in my mouth. That doesn't belong there. I'm not supposed to do this against God. This is wrong to do. This is what I'm supposed to do for God. So they're getting knowledge. And in all diligence, in your love to us. So Paul has a heart for the Corinthians. And the Corinthians have a heart for Paul. See that ye abound in the grace also. What's the grace? Giving. Macedonia is doing it. You guys do it. And notice they're not saying, well, look at the notches on my belt. Look how many people we got saved last week. Look how much that, that thermometer is. We're up to the 2,000. No, he's not doing it. He's saying, listen, the Macedonians are giving. Corinthians, you give. What they're doing is proper. You do is proper. You're, you're diligent. You're knowledgeable. Give. Yeah. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. This is not God said, thou shalt get money. The forwardness of others are people who misuse, who have done wrong. But to prove, to prove your sincerity, do you really love God enough that you sacrifice? Do you know an Old Testament story like that with the love of sacrificing? When Abraham took Isaac, his only begotten son, and carried him up to that mountain? He was going to kill that boy for God. Are you willing to give up a little less? Are you willing to give up a couple... Maybe a week's full of coffee to help a missionary or someone in the church or the church itself. Can you give up a, a, a thing of worms?
Can you give up some time to read your, you know, reading your Bible every day, taking 15, 20 minutes at least to read, that's time, that's recorded. 15 minutes reading your Bible, three or four chapters a day, that's, that's better than no one who does not read their Bible. How about praying for people? That takes time. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, heaven, yet for your sakes he became poor, earth. You know what Christ gave for us? He gave it all. He left it all behind. That must have been a shock for Jesus. I know you don't have, I know you don't, no one here remembers when they were a baby. But can you just imagine that moment? You are sitting in the glory of God, the angels, the seraphim, and God Almighty Himself. And next thing you know, you're in the arms of a woman upon her breast in a barn or stable, whatever you want to call it. Really? The only thing that Jesus had at the, at the cross was five pieces of clothes. That's it. You know what he had in heaven? Everything. Yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. You read the Laodicean Church Age, chapter 3 of Revelation. You think you're rich. You think you're great. You, um, I'm not wording that correctly. But he says you're blind, miserable, and poor. I've got riches. I've got the richest father of all of all to call upon. And if he sees merit that I am able to handle what I'm asking, he will give it. If he doesn't see me able, then I don't get it. But God has it all. You know, they use gold and silver coins. Gold is what we walk on in the streets of New Jerusalem. It's where our feet sit. And herein... I give my advice. Okay, Paul, I'm going to give you advice. For this is expedient for you. This is important. Who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. For this has happened a year ago. A year. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also of, out of that which ye have. You say, what is Paul talking about? For if there be first a willing mind, I want to do it. It is accepted according to that a man has, and not according to that he has not. What have we been talking about? We're talking about offerings. For a year now the Corinthians had set their mind to give an offering to Paul and Paul says hey look at this not people are not gonna like this but don't don't give me what you don't have that ain't gonna be doing me no good you give me what you have chapter verse 12 it's accepted according to what a man hath not according to what putting an IOU in, in the offering plate ain't gonna help the church bills Imagine if your boss gave you a paycheck and you opened up the letter and said a big I, I owe you. You wouldn't appreciate that. And neither does God. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye be burdened. But, but by equity, equality, that now at this time your abundance... Phew, forgive me. Your abundance, I'm talking about money, may be supplied for their want. 
God it may be have given you more and above what you have to help others. How's that one? That's what it says. There are some people who have a lot, and then there might be to supply your want that there be equality. That's kind of funny against the socialism and communist preachers that that you know all of us are not the same. Because what does equality mean? We're all supposed to help each other that has needs from those that have no needs are taken care of to help those that have needs. Want to be no Christian in your church? Be desolate if somebody's able to help them out. What are you What are you doing? Putting money in a bank and how to go this money got? Look how much I got! And then the rapture happened. They couldn't do you no good sitting in a vault in a bank where you could have helped someone else with it. Aren't you supposed to love your brother? Aren't you supposed to help your brother? Listen, aren't we supposed to look for the rapture? Then what are we doing having big vast bank accounts going to a big rat? down in South Florida and go on to a bunch of roller coasters and cruises and all that and we got people in the church who really really need help come on what do you think these early Christians would have done we're talking about the carnal church now the carnal church is hey there are people who got an abundance of money and they're given to help others they're not going on lavish vacations boy they've grown up the American church hasn't. The pioneer days of America, the church house being the, uh, oh, shoot, what's the center? The, the meeting house. Man, they would help, everybody would help everybody. If a farmer was sick and he had children that weren't able, they would go do their fields and then go help the sick farmer's field so his family could survive. If a woman was about to give birth to the baby, the people in the family would, uh, of this town would come and help her and until she could get back on her feet and all that and help make the meals and help raise the kid. Everybody grouped together, got together. When you had a house with a mother, father, children, grandparents, all helping each other. Yeah, the barn built down, they all helped. And today you got people in, listen, the Bible says, oh, no man, no money. What do you do when you've been in the hospital and have to see doctors? And you lost your job. As it is written, He that hath gathered much had nothing over. He that gathered little had no lack. That's the manna. Listen, if you got too much at the rapture or your death, it ain't going to carry over. That bank account goes to whoever you inherited to or whoever the state says can have it. And uh, Solomon talks about a lot like that in Proverbs. You don't, you don't know who's going to get the money and what they're going to do with it. My grandpa was very stingy, stingy, stingy on the money. I could tell you some stories to curl your hair. And the person that got all that wasted it all. And he that gathered little had no lack. That is beyond reaping and sowing law. Well, he said, Mr. Stiley, the, you know, the guy that had little, he still didn't have that much. And how can he have no lack? Because that's the one who put more faith in God. That's the one that put all his, all his earnest and interest in the bank of God. And he would get rewards. And we're talking about the manna here. The manna came from who? It came from God. All our riches come from God, and most of most of everybody does not want to give it back to God. It's like three Jews. I can tell Jewish jokes. I love them. I pray for them. There are three Jews. They had they found a sack of pennies. And they're trying to decide, you know, well, how much do we give to God? And three of them guys say, well, I'll tell you what. We'll draw a circle on the ground. We'll throw the money up in the air. And what lands outside the circle, God gets. And the second Jew says, no, 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 no. 
We'll throw the money up in the ground, but whatever lands in the circle, we'll make a small circle. God gets that. The third wise Jew said, no. We'll throw the money up in the air, and whatever God wants, he'll grab, and the rest we'll take and fall to the ground. That's how people are with their, with their money. They throw, okay, God, take, oh, okay, thank you very much. I'll keep it all. Oh, okay, after the, after the week's paycheck and all the fun and all that, I got a dollar. You know, of all the presidents, George Washington spends more time in church than any other president, including Benjamin Franklin. Think about that one. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. We're back with Titus. Titus has a love for the Corinth church. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward, of his own accord he went unto you and we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches okay Titus is coming we are sending a messenger with Titus this is important two people Titus and another person and we have sent unto him the brother. He's got to be a saved person. Whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. This person is a saved person. And guess what? He preaches the gospel and helps churches. Important. And not, only, not that only. But who, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us. With this grace. So this guy, he's a brother. He's working the gospel. And he was chosen among the churches. I guess they took a voting for this guy. So this guy had to be respected. He had to be honored. He had to be of a good report to go with Titus for a reason. There's a reason. Which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord. And declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, that no man should be blamed us in this abundance which is administered by us. This abundance is the money. And what Paul is saying, listen, we're sending Titus to you. And we're going to send this other brother. And when you're dealing with church finance, you need more than two people to handle that money. Church treasury should never be one person alone anytime. It should be counted recounted and a third time recounted and documented by the three people that they agree on that week's or that day's offering so no one can say well you know i gave ten dollars and they really gave five dollars this is protecting the people that are in the office of the collections and this is to make sure that nobody who's working the collections steals the money because guess who the greatest church Offer, I mean, the church treasure that was a thief. Guess who the greatest one was that? The Bible says he held the bag and he was a thief. Judas. Don't you think if Paul followed Jesus, don't you think he knew that? So even with 12 men, Judas by himself is still stealing money. So what I'm going to do is no offense to Titus, no offense to this man. I'm going to send you by two or by three to make sure that money is accounted to the T. That's what he's doing. Providing us honest things. Exactly what the money is. Exactly what the count of the money is. Not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. So, excuse me, sir. My name is Stiley Hayward. I'd like to talk to you about Jesus Christ and the gospel. Get away from me, son. Well, sir, it's like talk. Listen, I know somebody stole money from a church. I'm sorry to hear that. And try to get any further with them. Now, I don't know the story, but if there are at least three people handling the account of the church, that guy would have been wrong. I can guarantee I get maybe three could work together, but. But the sight of man, you got to be careful. You got to have a good report, especially with money.
If there's two offices in a church you got to watch out that Satan is connected with, the treasury. Because Judas held the bag, he was a thief. I'll tell you another one you better watch out for. It, it sinks church, the music department. Because Satan, Lucifer, was the musician of heaven. And that's the two areas. The guy ran off with the piano player. Those are two offices you got to watch out. And another one is the pastor, because we haven't read yet. I think it's chapter 11 we come to. He's going to tell you that Satan has ministers. we got to watch out. Pro providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother, who we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things. So this guy is a good report. He's honest. He's been proved. He's there to help you when it comes to the ministry and that money. What if they were carried along the way? Now, there were thieves and robbers along the way. What if by chance they were robbed? Well, two or three people say, hey, you know, listen, he was, he was brown skinned, though high. But one man went walking along. Well, what happened to the money? It was stolen, really? What witnesses do you have? None. Oh, okay. And even if it's a true story, it cast out. Did, was he really wrong? But now, much more diligent. Look at diligent. Look at diligence. Verse 7. Diligent. That's a word that should go with your money. Diligent. Upon the great confidence which I have in you. You mean that carnal baby church? Paul says, I've got confidence in you. Boy, have they grown. You know what money in churches go for today? Bounce houses. Hey, if you get 46 Bible verses, we'll give you a new Bible that you already got a Bible. What? What? We got knick-knack, paddywax, all kinds of decorations for a vacation Bible. Yeah? Okay. We're going to go on a team trip to Six Flags. Really? That's your money? That goes to God? Whether any do... I don't care if you don't like what I don't say. What I say. I don't care if you don't like it. You're going to be judged. God's money is to be used for godly things. Whether any do acquire of Titus. Here he comes. Titus must be a well-respected man. He's got his own book. Paul writes to him. His own epistle. Him and Timothy. He is my partner and fellow helper. Not done. Concerning you. Titus has been charged to the Corinthians. And if Titus has been charged to the Corinthians from 1 Corinthians to 2 Corinthians, look how well Titus has done with them. Look how well they've got under Titus. And isn't it funny? That's the name. That's This is not the same man, but the name of the Roman that destroys Jerusalem. Titus, 70 A.D. This is 60 A.D. He is my partner and fellow helper concerning you or our brethren be inquired of. There are They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. So Paul's getting all kinds of reports. Missionary reports are going all out about these churches in Asia. Wherefore show ye to them, and before the churches, the proof of your love, the money, the giving, the sacrifice. What was God's love? What was his proof of his love for us? For God so loved the world that he gave. All right, so the Corinthians so loved God, they gave. And I'm not just saying money. The Macedonian church so loved God they gave. 
Stylish so loves God that he gives. Wherefore show ye to them, and before their churches, the proof of your love. There's works with love right there, James. You're not saved by works, but there is your work. If you're not giving and claim to be a Christian, the proof of your love, and of our boasting on your behalf. Paul saying, <laughs> Corinthians, you're a great giving. <laughs> Please make my boasting right. <laughs> Please don't make me a liar. I have so much confidence on you. Boy, the Corinthian church are giving, giving, giving. Please back that up. And we close. 